This will be the uh, first of several videos to describe the work we did on the uh, job known as HK CBNI. It's Holland and Knight uh, CBNI, which stands for Chicago Bridge and Iron. Uh, the case involved a construction of a refinery or a, uh, uh, sort of a rework and a refurbishment and an increase in capacity to a major refinery in Colombia that uh, CBNI was the uh, prime contractor for, and uh, due to cost overruns, uh, they were being sued for uh, extending the project and uh, more than doubling the price. And our, uh, we represented uh, CBNI, and we worked with them to point out that all of the uh, cost overruns and uh, ex increased uh, time could be attributed to changes made by the owner uh, of the refinery and the Colombian government that uh, due to their indecision and uh, changes in design and changes in concept uh, forced CBNI into a position where they had to uh, you know, re-engineer a lot of stuff, take a lot of time, and uh, increase the cost uh, considerably over what it was uh, originally intended to be. But the end of the project, it was uh, started out to be a $3.7 billion project, it ended up being $8 billion, but uh, all along the way, uh, the owners, uh, Repicar and Ecopetrol, were uh, praising the project, uh, approving the budgets, and uh, now at the end of the project, they claimed uh, big damages and uh, cost overruns when it turned out to be actually a, a world-class refinery. It was really a big deal. So um, several aspects of the work that we did uh, will be uh, covered in the upcoming videos. But the first one here, we'll use one of our uh, new styles of presentation, which is a little flashier, a little prettier uh, than you know normal PowerPoint bullet point slides. But it, uh, this one will also serve as sort of a, a case overview of uh, you know, what the themes of the case were, and then in subsequent video, videos, we'll talk about the, some of the technical aspects of it. So uh, it was a world-class refinery when all was said and done. The uh, uh, presentation we're going to look at here is a summary of all of the uh, accomplishments that CB&I uh, achieved while they were building this refinery. And... Uh, and some of this is in the words of uh, the owner, Equipetrol, uh, praising the work that CBNI did and uh, talking about what a, you know, a, a big and wonderful project it was with quotes from uh, the president of the uh, refinery and his testimony to uh, certain groups uh, during the course of the work. Um, we approached this in a number of ways. Uh, Here's sort of a, a prettier graphic uh, describing the final cost. It ended up being $8 billion, which was you know, several billion above and beyond what the uh, bid was, but uh, it was uh, uh, all those increases in costs could be attributed to all the changes and the indecision on the part of the owner. Uh, so we kind of put together a real interesting way to compare where all those costs came from and the statement that they were not out of line with other projects of this magnitude. And actually they were uh, sort of in the middle of that range. These were uh, benchmark studies that Equipetrol commissioned that showed uh, this project was uh, well below the average. It was uh, on track with uh, other projects of this type, uh, no excess costs, no cost overruns. All of these reports coming during uh, the course of the uh, the work, and those were these were set up to show that in contrast, at the end of the project, now all of a sudden it's sour grapes and uh, Replicard did a bad thing when all along uh, Equipetrol or uh, CBNI did a bad thing, and all along Replicar and Equipetrol were approving and uh, even uh, commissioning studies that showed that this work was. Uh, well done and within the bounds of what was expected on these types of uh, projects. So there's a uh, company commissioned benchmarking studies, international benchmarking studies, and uh, 
budget approvals during the course of works. Here's the you know the initial cost estimate of 3.7 uh, billion approved by both Ecopetrol and uh, Reficar uh, in June the next year. Another contract revision uh, change control came about, uh, increased the cost a little bit. Both Reficar and Ecopetrol approved that. Um, in the next year, another budget increase due to changes in the design. Uh, Ecopetrol and uh, Reficar approved that one. Uh, we just banged through these at every stage when the cost was increased uh, and it was reported. Uh, the owners were well aware of it and approved it at those stages in the project, uh, setting the stage for uh, you know, CB&I to go ahead and uh, contrasting that with uh, their claims at the end of the project that CBNI messed this thing up. So um, this presentation kind of uh, hit the highlights of some of these quotes that came from various uh, uh, people at uh, Repicar and Ecopetrol. It's a high quality project uh, by the measure of this Nelson complexity in index. It increased from uh, 4.8 to 11.1, making it a one of the most complex and largest in the world. Um, and a high producing uh, refinery with massively increased uh, capacity, uh, increased efficiency, um, up to Columbia's international competitiveness, competitiveness, and even the uh, the uh, Repcar's director of engineering, you know, calls it uh, an excellent, a, a very good project. Um, kind of put together a, sort of a list here of the things that CB and I had to overcome during the project. The feed design is the front end engineering design, uh, which Repcar was, or which uh, CB and I was trying to do uh, before you start building. But during the course of that, the owners made changes. They uh, changed configuration of the plant when it was supposed to be under construction. They implemented some new cost savings ideas. They switched, uh, from the goal of producing maximum gasoline to producing maximum uh, propylene, which causes you to redesign many aspects of that plant, uh, introduced a, a different catalyst and a regenerator. They added a, another power generator. They changed the licensor for one of their catalytic cracking units. They uh, built a new control building. They replaced the flare system, uh, bought an entire system from uh, a refinery that never was built and thought they could drop it in here and uh, make it work. And of course, CB and I had to re-engineer it to make it work in this plant. And they you know, removed a, a conveyor system that CB and I was relying on and had to cause them to redesign pipe racks and so forth. So these are things that CB and I had to deal with, design changes, uh, numerous and massive design changes that CB and I had to deal with during the course of uh, what should have been just straight up production. And of course, these are the sources of all the increased cost and uh, extra time that the project took. So um, this was kind of an interesting way to uh, take a look at all of the, the numbers of this case. You know, 108 million man hours, 102 million uh, man hours without lost time. Uh, we got uh, 13 million feet of cable. I'll just step through these. It's just a, a way to quantify this massive amount of uh, work over the years that this project was in uh, use, 6,000 uh, purchase order, 180 cranes on the site at one time, covered you know, 140 hectares, uh, 54 new tanks and spheres, increased uh, Columbia's, uh, or accounted for 10% of Columbia's gross domestic product, um, included 34 entire separate uh, refinery units with zero heavy lift accidents uh, used during the crane. So by all accounts and all measures, uh, you know, a fantastic project. A um, couple of the real interesting things where they had to use the world's largest crane in order to install some of the new units in the catalytic cracker. And they were installing new units while the old unit was running. So they were lifting these giant vessels over uh, running portions of the plant because they wouldn't shut down their production to build the new one. So they had to, uh, CB and I had to figure out a way to build a new catalytic cracker 
while the old, in the old catalytic tractor while the old one is running. And uh, of course, they accomplished that. And even the uh, uh, representatives of Reficar and Ecopetrol uh, are praising what the project uh, looked like, how it uh, how it came out, and uh, noting all of the uh, the good things that happened. So, at the end, their claims of gross negligence <clears throat> were. Uh, uh, refuted by this series of events that we just looked at and all of the data that was accumulated and uh, how can an EPC contractor like CB&I, uh, how could they have acted with gross negligence and have created uh, a project of this magnitude and of this quality and of this value. So uh, top overview of the case and uh, sort of using our new cool uh, graphics to uh, tell that story in a little bit uh, flashier fashion. So uh, subsequent videos will deal with some of the other aspects. There'll be a, one, two, three more videos on uh, a lot of the mapping uh, pieces we did. There'll be a video on technical specs on uh, the different units and the different uh, uh, technical aspects of construction and the details of some of the units. And then finally, one on some of the legal issues uh, regarding, uh, you know, how local labor uh, affected the project uh, and some of the invoicing and uh, issues like that.